Welcome to this week's session of Bible study. This is First Baptist Church. We're located at 101 South Wilmington Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. My name is Steve Allen. I have the, pre the pleasure of serving as interim pastor of this great church. Uh, we invite you to join with us tonight, and we love to go in Bible study with a high spirit. So uh, if you don't mind, we're going to lift up just a verse or two, uh, the first and last verse of glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood of life. Singing glory to his name, singing glory to his name, precious name, singing glory to his name, precious name. There to my heart was the blood of Sing glory to his name. Praise be to God. Thank you so much for joining with us tonight. We are just glad to be in the number one more time. I'm going to ask, if you will, that uh, Deacon Green would pray us in tonight. Deacon Sam Green, would you go ahead and give us the opening prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory for this night, Lord. We thank you for being who you are, our great and mighty God. We thank you for giving us an opportunity to study your word, to learn more about the words of James. And we ask that you just bless our pastor for tonight, give yes. him power, give him Please. understanding that we may understand what yes. the word is saying. We ask yes. all this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining with us tonight. And we are uh, We are continuing in the book of James. And for those of you who uh, know that you have all studied it, so I can't, uh, I know you're ready tonight. You're loaded for bad, so to speak. And we're going to start with this, this, this uh, frame that we see on the, screen tonight about stumbling, stumbling. Now, what in the world does it mean to stumble? Make mistakes. Okay. Make, make mistakes. Okay. All right. And so, uh, of course, a person, has anybody ever made a mistake? <laughs> yes, all of us. Yeah. All of, every, we all guilty of that, haven't we? Well, the Bible says that we ain't made mistakes. There's something, something wrong with us. <laughs> well, we've all done it. Yeah, uh, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory yeah. of God. And uh, we just thank God for the fact that He's a He's a God of grace and mercy. And so it says a person who does not stumble is perfect. And is able to bridle his whole body. Why in the world would you want to be able to bridle? Why would you want to bridle your body? Anybody got a clue? What does that mean? Guide it. Sir? Steve? Guide it. Staying under control. Oh, okay. You, Steve says a direct and guide. And, and Deacon Green says it means to, to be under control. You want to be uh, keep your body, uh, keep your, the whole body under control. Yeah, now, uh, you know sometimes we have problems keeping uh, one part of the body under control. Primarily, what part of the body is that it gets us the most trouble? Our lips, your tongue, your tongue. <laughs> okay, they they call it tongue, but we you know old fashioned it's the mouth. You, yeah. know, you know you got a lot of mouth. You ever heard the old folks say you got a lot of mouth? Right. You don't know. You don't know where you keep your mouth shut, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. And so the the tongue, and we, tonight we're talking about that part of the body, the tongue. We know the tongue is a very small part of the body, isn't it? Oh yeah. It's yeah. one of the smallest part of the body, and yet it, it gives us perhaps the most trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can we can get a whole lot of trouble with the tongue, can't we? Yeah. Yeah. 
And not only can we get in trouble, but the tongue can also cause a lot of trouble, can't it? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to see what it means to stumble. And let's move on to the next slide and see what it's talking about. Uh, uh, and so we're talking about a doctrine of taming the tongue, perhaps. And, and then we're going back to the next slide and see. Uh, I don't know why that time. That's a, I guess Canada kind of said, you know what? I don't know what this is doing. Because it's actually showing stuff. I didn't go back up. I'm sorry. Okay, keep going. Okay. Uh, okay, hold on. Back up. Right there. Now, uh, and we talked about we stumble in many things. And if anyone does not stumble, one of the things we stumble with is how do you stumble in word? Anybody got a clue? Saying things we shouldn't say. Oh, Deacon Clarkson said, saying something that we shouldn't say. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. so, you know, are you supposed to say everything you think? No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> There's something, you know, some things we ought to just teach ourselves, right? Right. right. <laughs> but if we don't, you know, you know, if if you, before we can catch ourselves. Sometimes we we will say something that comes to our mind, and then we really didn't mean to say that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and our children, you know, sometimes you gotta be careful where you say things to, uh, you know, who you say things in front of. Right. Because, uh, you know, if you tell say something, grown up say it, something in front of a child, guess what's gonna happen? They'll repeat it behind you. They're gonna repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes they're gonna say it in inopportune times for you. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's gonna say it in times that it's gonna cause you to be embarrassed because they they they're not gonna put a filter on it. They're gonna yeah. say exactly what they'll say. Mama said, Grandma said, Papa said. <laughs> or they ask, Mama, did you say this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? You busted. Right. Uh, yeah, and, and, and Pastor, when the man, when a, a, a Bill was doing, the guy used to come by the house way back in the day. Your mama would say, "Go tell that man I'm not home," and they go right out there and say, "My mama said to tell you she wasn't home." <laughs> 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 that's a that's a stumbling word, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we say, told, we told the my mom said, "Tell you she not home." <laughs> she not home. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> but yeah, so we have to be careful. Uh, but all of us can say something sometimes that we wish that we could take back or that we wish that we did not say because it could create a lot of harm and create hurt. Can we agree on that? Yeah. Amen. All right. So let's move on to the next slide and see what else we can see about the stumbling. And we already answered what it means to stumble, so keep going. Okay. And we know that none of us are perfect. And because if we were perfect, we would not stumble. That's right. But, but because, okay, so then we get to talking about examples of things that are controllable, I believe. Let's see if we get there. Because apparently my slide was imperfect. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Okay, keep going. I don't know what happened there. I missed. Okay, back up. All right, bridle. What does bridle mean? A bridle is something you put on. You, in the old days, you put on a horse. Amen. And you were able to turn him to the left or to the right. Okay. So you can go back to what Steve was saying. DK, yeah. So I will call Steve. I mean, we, we are first name basis tonight. So if I don't call you by your old title, don't hold it against me. But what, <laughs> what, 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 you know, it would guide, as Steve said earlier, you could yep. guide that horse, couldn't you? That's right. Or That's that right. mule. Some of y'all didn't have horses, you had mules. Uh, you we had, had, a, had, a, <laughs> had a mule. Had a mule. Yes, sir. You, you get that mule to go because you could cluck, I guess, and, and tell him to go ahead and, and, and he, he'd know the foul and go ahead and do whatever you told him to do. That's but right. you had that bridle to turn the horse, or the, in the Bible talks about horses, so let's talk about the horses. The, and you can have that, that horse. Yes. That past, that that language was get up, meaning for him to go. Uh -huh. Ha, mean left. G, mean right. 
<laughs> and stop. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the muse, we had muse, so they knew there was sound. And if you want to go left, yeah, you pull a little bit, but you say ha, ah, and he go left. Gee, right. you go right, but Come it was on. because that bridle was across his tongue in his mouth. Yes, and mm -hmm. if, if you pull on it, they hurt him a little bit. So okay. that that would make it, him do it encourage him to go where you wanted to go. Yeah, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think we're going somewhere. So let's let's keep going. So yeah. now if you could cut you know, yes. Somebody else is gonna add some help and help us a little bit. Now we're gonna know now a, a horse is, is much bigger than we are typically when they grown, aren't they? Oh yeah. Large animal. Yes. Large. Yep. And the bridle is mm -hmm. not really that big in comparison to the horse, is it? It's a small thing. All right, let's see where we see where see where we go with this. Next slide. So we, we know that things things used to tame. Now the bit in the mouths of horses. Mm -hmm. And then he talks about how you can move a ship, big as a ship is, you know, on the ocean, they, they can move it with what? A rudder. Just a rudder. The rudder. Yeah. The rudder. And and turn that thing and make it go in different directions. Now the ship is huge, isn't it? Right. Oh yeah. The rudder is relatively small in comparison, isn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah. So the small object is yet able to control or steer a much larger object or thing, right? Yeah. That's right. So we could say it tames it. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It, it, it tames it, doesn't it? It makes it go where you want it to go. All right. All right. So far, so good. All right. Let's see what happens. Keep going with the text. Okay. But wait a minute. Something, the one thing that the, the text says is untamable is the tone. Oh. <laughs> How can that be? Because typically people don't bite their tongues; they let them wag. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good, Steve. <laughs> we don't. We, we we have a tendency not to bite our tongues, and you know, at certain ages, we take the filters off. You know, some people might be generally uh, tend to restrain themselves uh, in certain environment environs. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and in certain age groups, in certain places, but sometimes when people get older, uh oh, <laughs> what happens? <laughs> they let it all hang out. They let it all hang out. Uh, Rosanna <laughs> says that you know, and, and they they tend to say what they think. Yeah. And, and, and that's amazing because sometimes, you know, these people might be mild and meek and, uh, and no help, won't say much and, and, and you know, maybe even quiet. <laughs> but they get a certain age and they figure they can tell what they want, they can say what they want to say. And yeah. I guess, you know, to some extent, uh, maybe they think age has its privilege, but still, there are times that we need to learn how to bite our tongue, Steve says. And not let everything hang out or wag, and and because uh, there are times when words can cause pain, it can cause harm, it can tear up, and it can it can disrupt, can it? Yeah. yeah. It, can, it can. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. I want to say the verse says the tongue also is a fire. A world of evil amongst parts of the body, so that that tongue can do some damage. If you, you know, a fire will burn up everything. Okay, and the tongue is the same way. Okay, yeah, we're gonna get Proverbs there. eighteen twenty one says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yeah. Okay, and you're right. You know, a tongue can. You know, there used to be an old saying. You, you know, you, you know, you talk about freedom of speech. But you don't have the right to yell fire in a movie theater. That's right. That's right. Okay. And, and the reason why is because you cause a panic, right? That's right. It's about to get hurt. 
and somebody will get hurt. So therefore, there has to be some limits on when we say things or when we when it's appropriate to say some things and when we should not say something. Even <laughs> Lord, even if you if you if you you know you really want to say something, there's a time, you know, you need to hold your peace. You need to bite your tongue and not say it. Because mm -hmm. once it's out there, then we, look, yeah. I'm gonna use yes, go ahead. Somebody was saying something, so go ahead. I want to, I want to hear you. Was somebody make a comment? Mean, once it's out there, you can't take it back. Can't undo it. Okay. All right. But Warren says once it's out there, you know, now there's some people, we talked about this previously, but we see the danger of putting some things out in a public place, right? And we're yeah. seeing that today. Uh, this past week or so, the stuff that you post online can come back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and and later, like we talked about this several weeks ago about how people should be careful what they post out there on Facebook, Instagram, and other platforms because once it's out there, you know, sometimes people have a, make a business of, of seeing you know, checking your Facebook page or checking your Instagram. And everybody that does that may not be doing it for the reasons that you think. And so some of the things that you say or post can come back to haunt you or embarrass you, correct? Right. Yeah. And so, and that's why, you know, we try to encourage young folks because, you know, some people, um, they, you know, I, I see, we see it more and more. I don't know if you, you can't even go on, on every day you get the morning news come, and, you know, people are really getting more lewd in their behavior. And so their post is like, there, there's certain pride in being lewd mm -hmm. and posting themselves in, 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 you know, wearing clothing that really doesn't, you can see everything, right? right. Well, and it may come a day that they regret that. Mm -hmm. It may come a day that, you know, they regret that. And so I know you say, well, that day's long, but they're not here now because of what people are doing. Because it seems to be a way of getting exposure. But it's the wrong kind of exposure, isn't it? <laughs> all right. So all right, we, we start with this premise that no one can tame the tongue. Uh, let's see, you let Sister Linda and uh, Deacon Steve... Uh, Steve, okay, so let's move to the next slide, uh, wow. Brother Haynes. All right, now, why not the tongue? Why is the tongue such a difficult thing to control? <laughs> it's a habit. Steve says it's a habit. Anybody else got an idea? Uh, any input on that? Thoughts? Well, we use it all the time. Sometimes <laughs> it's good and sometimes it's bad. Well, we're going to talk about that. You know, the tongue is, is you know, it's sometimes a two-edged sword, isn't it? Right. That's right. right. And, and we got to be careful how it cuts. Right. Yeah. Well, what's and, in you comes out in your tongue. Oh, <laughs> Brother Sanders says, whatever's in you will come out of you. That's but wait a minute. But, but are we all good, wholesome folks? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so we got yeah. issues. We got uh, we have, we have issues. issues, and so the issues become manifest. And then the other part of it, and this is really what we're really talking about in, in, a, in a real sense, is this: it's about maturity. Yeah, we are at different stages of maturity as Christians, mm -hmm. and it takes a mature Christians. To be able to bridle the tongue, bridle the tongue, and to behave properly mm -hmm. and correctly yeah. in in, a, in not only in a church setting but in life. Right. Yeah, right. you know this is something we have to grow in grace with. We have to work at it. Doesn't it's, it's almost 
unnatural according to the text in one sense, right? <laughs> it's hard to do. It, it, it requires work. It requires a lot of effort. And I think it, it really depends upon our understanding because when we, let's face it, uh, in our immaturity as Christians, we sometimes bring our worldly behavior and we don't even think that we need to change. And that's sad in a real sense because we say we're good, we say we're good Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if we are Christians, then there ought to be some change in the way we act. Right. And in our ability to conform to what Christ to be more Christ-like. That's what I said Sunday, right? We were basically, you know, last couple of weeks I've been talking about being like Christ. And then we're talking about this week, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, not only having the mind of Christ, but to strive to be more like him, uh, to be more perfect, to become more perfect, more, more, you know, more like Christ in, in how we act. In the things take on his take on his image. Yes, and so so why not the tongue? Okay, well we 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 dabbled with that. We dabbled with that. Let's move on and see what else we can see uh, with the next slide. I think it's coming too. We're gonna get you that fire that Hank was talking yeah. about just a minute yeah. ago. Hank, Hank wanted to jump and run to the fire. <laughs> 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 so we had the fire. Uh, he he uh, James. Uh, Compares the tongue to to a fire. How is yep. the how is the tongue like a fire? Damage. The damage. The damage. Consumes everything without uh, regard. Uh, you know, a fire can start from just a small spark, can it? Yeah. But once it gets a fire gets lit. I don't know if you ever lit the fire. You know, you go out. We we go out camping, and, and you light that fire. You keep adding flames to pursue that thing can get out of control. You know, it's been on the, you know, my dry it is out there, whatever. And if you're not careful, if you don't tend that fire properly, it can burn down the whole forest. Mm -hmm. And we see that uh, almost every year out in California. We yeah. see all those different fires out in that California, Las Vegas area. And you just, somebody's careless and they throw away, you know, light them, throw away a cigarette. The next day, you got hundreds of thousands of acres. And homes jeopardized. You know, a, roar, a raging fire that firefighters can't put out. Yeah. And so it is like a tongue. A tongue can light a fire and it can cause death. It can cause destruction uh, if it is not used properly. And then it says, <laughs> he says that it, it, it sets fire you know, to, to really our nature you know, on the course of nature. In other words, it can affect it can affect your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your whole course of life. So mm -hmm. somebody said, you know, you think about it when you're young and sometimes you gotta learn how to to walk away yeah. from conflict, right? Yeah. And pass yes, out. yes sir. I will, I'm I'm gonna give an example of of, of that one where uh, Years ago, I guess in in our family, I guess the brothers had some evil words to, towards each other. Yes. Our family consists of between four and five hundred members. So every time we have a family reunion, fifty years later, only three families from one of the brothers will come to the reunion. We we'll have three hundred or four hundred people there. And they don't come because of some words that the two brothers had. And you can ask anybody on that side of the family and they couldn't tell you what was said or when it was said. But they are carrying that thing with them. They're not coming because the two brothers had words 50 something. And they, all of them dead. The brothers are gone. But they still carry it on. <laughs> still carry it on. Well, look, hey, you know what it sounds like? The Hatfield and McCoy's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm half feeling the because y'all uh, y'all familiar with that or they just about oh, yes. oh yeah. yeah yeah they've been fighting and I think they said you know if they really traced it back to what really caused a feud 
Yeah. They were both caught the same woman. <laughs> and, one, and, and one of them won out. And that's what happened. That few, they've been fighting for you know centuries, like like basically. And yeah. so, uh, but yeah, one word can kindle a fire that can be out of control and rage, as Hank has given an example, that can affect the whole course of family life. Yeah. And uh and of course can affect the outcome, not only of families, but churches. Mm -hmm. Churches. You know, people get into arguing in the church. And, you know, it can cause a total split in the church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I'm you know, familiar with an incident where, uh, and I've shared it uh, for Deacon Green, where a church would get ready to call a pastor. And, the, you know, two officers of the church got to words. And the new pastor, the pastoral candidate, was there. And he and his wife. At the you know at the, coming into church when they were almost at blows, and had to be separate. Guess what happened? That pastor candidate and his wife went back to the hotel room, and on the next day he sent in his you know he withdrew his name. Yeah, as a candidate, so it affected the whole life of that church. Mm -hmm. What yeah. happened between two members, and, and you know it was a negative effect. Oh yeah. That we don't know yet the course of how long or if the church would be able to survive or, you know, mm -hmm. how long it'll take because they were at the point of getting ready to call a pastor. Mm -hmm. He was the candidate. Mm -hmm. the, you know, if anybody been on search committee knows the effort and, 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 and what it takes to, to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, whether it be two months, three months or you know, whatever. It's altered the whole course of the church's life. Yeah. It, so that's um, why, go ahead, uh, Sam, uh, anybody else want to add something? I'm going to move to the next one. Yeah, I, I have an example. In yes. the hospital, there was a clerk, a uh, black lady that had a reputation of being such a sweet Christian. And one day somebody said something to her that she did not like. And she really went off. She told them every testimony. It's, it's just like a small fire can destroy a whole forest. Yes. And so I don't think it will take her a long time to recover from that bad incident. Okay. It can affect your whole employment. You can lose a job. You know, something is said in, in, in the heat of a moment, of anger. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it can it can do that. And so we have to be careful. And, and then it says it can defile the whole body because, you know, it makes, you know, you it, it's coming out of you. <laughs> you know, it's representing you. They're not going to distinguish the, your tongue from the rest of your body, is it? That's right. It's gonna, it's gonna have, and so we see people coming to blows. Yeah, we see see people that like they won't speak. We see yeah. all that, and so uh, it says it's set on fire. Yeah, uh, the fire hell. <laughs> it, it, it can be a hell fire. Yeah, and so we, you know, Alexa, once it's burning, mm -hmm. it's hard to get back under control. Yes, indeed. And, and like I say, you can, you can, yes, sir. Uh, and people, 20 years later, they'll remember that. They won't remember your good works and what you've done and that God has given you. They'll remember that that came out of your mouth. That Absolutely. And that's so sad because, like I said, and, and you know, and so like I said, you know, sometimes people say something, they're well-intentioned, but, but if it's wrong, it's still wrong, isn't it? Yep. And they might think it's right. And yet it's so much uh, pain and so much uh, harm that it may cause that they cannot be recovered from, but for the grace of God. So we have to be careful what we say. Let's move on to the next slide.
Yeah, I'm going to ask a question. What does defile mean? <laughs> Anybody know what it is to defile? Defile means that it makes something no good. Okay. It could contaminate. It could contaminate. Yeah. yeah. Ruin yeah. a bad testimony. Okay. All right. All right. So it's, it, it's not good. It's, it's bad. Good. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it can make it rotten. It can make it of no effect. Yes. yes. Make it unclean. Yes, right. Make it unclean. Okay, let's keep going and see what we get to the next text because we're getting to the point where we're going to start talking about uh, the course of nature. You know, really, is just, you know, the, you know, there's a natural course, there's a cycle of life. And like I said, it can set it all a, a kilter. It can set it all off, off kilter so that. Uh, you know, you could be headed in one direction in life, and but for a moment's you know, saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, it could cause you to actually lose your life. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. You can actually lose your life, or lose a job, or lose a uh, uh, lose respect in the community, in the church. So uh, we have to be careful. What we say, we have to get more control of the tongue. Let's keep going. We back to the tameable things, tameable creatures, and 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 the author James says that every kind of beast and bird, reptile, creature, creatures of the sea can be tamed. Y'all remember growing up? You used to we used to watch those movies, uh, uh, you know, maybe over in India, and they have a snake charmer. <clears throat> And they have had playing that music, and that snake would be up there just, you know, <laughs> under control, as long as that music was playing, right? <laughs> now, look, I, no, look, I, I, I'm not going to be the one to try to test that theory, but, but that's the point he's trying. To, every kind of beast and bird we see, uh, you know, lions who, you know, you had a lion tamer in there in the ring with them. <laughs> and you know they can snap in that whip there. They, they don't just go in and pat them on the head, do they? They have something to control the whip, right? And uh, but, you know all kinds of animals tameable, but let's see what what can't be tamed. The tongue, the tongue. All right, so uh, let's go to the next slide, Brother Hayes. All right, so let's look at some of the problems. With the tongue, some of the problems with the tongue, and this is kind of the things the problems with the tongue is it, it, the, James calls it an unruly evil. Anybody ever about anybody unruly, out of control, yeah, yeah. <laughs> disruptive, right? No filters, no consideration, right? Because once they you know, especially when people get mad, right? <laughs> when they get angry, they don't care what. You know, what they're going to say. Say, say it if it kills them. They're going to say it if it sets fire to the whole organization. They're yeah. going to say it because they think that, you know, because, again, they're really, but it's, they're saying it because they don't understand who whose they are, really. They lose control of who's who they belong to. Uh-oh. You know, our life is not our own. That's right. Right. And if we understand that we are created in the image of God and Jesus is our Lord and Savior, then that ought to put some brakes on some of the things that we do and say, right? Amen. And so... Uh, we know that the tongue is full of deadly poison. Y'all know poison will kill. It sure will. Yeah. Just as sure as Sunday is Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know several years ago, I, I, I know back about in the, maybe in the 1980s, uh, early 80s, there was a, a, a woman in North Carolina who was known as the Black Widow. Oh, yeah. And she married, uh, she would marry men for money. Yep, she poisoned, she would poison, 
She pours them mm -hmm. to get their life insurance policies. Mm -hmm. Blanche. Blanche. Uh, what was Blanche? That's right. Blanche, yeah, Blanche Worthy, I believe is what her name was. Blanche. Blanche. But anyway, it's Blanche. First name was Blanche. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, she she poisoned several husbands uh, full of deadly poison. And the tongue is like that. It can be full of deadly poison. And the ironic thing is that we can use the tongue for good or evil, right? Yeah, we can praise. And you use the tongue to bless. Say he, and he talks about the, this is, this is ironic. You use the tongue to bless God and then do what? Curse man. But it, that, that, wait a minute, that, that doesn't make sense because he said out of the same mouth proceeds, you know, blessings and curses, and we bless God, and then mm -hmm. we curse men. Yeah. No, no, wait a minute, but wait a minute, we said that we are made in whose image? God. God. So you gonna curse? You gonna curse something that God created? Yeah. In His image. Because we lose our religion or we don't have good religion. Good religion. We don't have no religion. No religion. <laughs> and, and, and so, because, and so it's one thing, that's why we have to understand the difference. You can go to church, you can go to church 100 years, but if you have not been, if you're not been born again, oh, they never going back to, maybe what, you know, you got to be born again, don't you? Be born again. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right. And when you're filled yeah. with the Holy Spirit, right. it allows that change to take place. It's necessary for us to live a life that is different from what we the way we used to live our lives. And so, uh, bless our God, curse me. And that is totally opposites. And totally, God doesn't, that's not, that. That I, you know, that's not Bible. We say God doesn't like ugly, right? That's right. Y'all understand? That's one of those idioms we use growing mm -hmm. up. I don't like Grandma might say. Anybody ever hear Grandma say that? Yeah. Or your mom or dad or somebody say that? Mom too. I don't like ugly. Well, and so, yes. Anybody want to add to that? All right. So. This is where the irony is. And then James just says, he calls a spade a spade. That my brothers or my sisters, it ought not be this way. It ought not to be so. It should not happen. That's what he says. And for those of you following me in the text, we're down about the 10th verse. Third, chapter 3, verse 10 is about where we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. We've already said same mouth. That's right. And, <laughs> and the question: Should this be so? And everybody nope. knows the answer. To that no, no, no. Okay, not right. It's not right. You know. Now, hopefully. You know, one of the things that we, you know, when we begin to become true Christians, almost like real Christians, Christians in fact, we ought to be able to curb that tongue, or at least stop cursing, right? <laughs> we ought to stop cursing. If you used to curse, <laughs> that would be one of the first things you work on, right? Mm -hmm. Clean up your mouth. Clean up your, your language. Uh, and so he asked a question. Does a spring, now y'all country folks, some of y'all from the country, mm -hmm. does a spring seem for, do you, do you find fresh water and bitter water coming from the same fountain or spring? No. 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 No, no we all know that's not, that, no. And no. so what he's talking about in the text, if you think about it, Pal, you know, in, in Palestine and, and in Israel, they were kind of arid climates. And so many of the towns, you know, what they try to do is find some water, right? right? And that's where they would build the towns around that water because you had to have a source of water in order to, to have life, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And because it's arid grounds, you would have, and you know, God is good because you remember Hagar? You remember Hagar yeah, got kicked yeah. out? She right. got evicted from her home 
Yep. <laughs> she had a summary ejectment. And then mm-hmm. summary ejectment, she and, she and, and, and Ishmael got kicked to the to the curb. Mm-hmm. And they were out there in the in the wilderness with no, and God led them to a well, didn't he? Right. To a spring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they would have water to drink. Mm-hmm. And and so uh because they needed that water to live, didn't they? Right. Yeah. And, and she th- she was about to give up. Right. You know. You know, because she thought, you know, the boy was going to die because he was getting thirsty. Right. And God, you know, they led it to a, to a well. To, so here we need the spring. And the spring was vital for life. And so one of the things they were trying to do is find fresh water. Right. Now, if it was bitter, if the water was bitter, you know, it, you know they couldn't make use of it, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But then... Uh, God was able to even turn the bitter water sweet, wasn't he? Right, yeah. 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 Turn the bitter water sweet so it could be drank. But ordinarily, you mm-hmm. would not get bit, find bitter and fresh water coming out of the same uh, source. Mm-hmm. And so that's why he got asked a question. He's asking questions that people in their day would be familiar about. Hello? Just like, you know, some of y'all who like like Sam was able to tell us how to how to control that mule. <laughs> so in, in the language for childhood, because of the spirits growing up on the farm. Mm-hmm. And so uh now yeah, this is another question. So the, now these questions make sense if you understand that he's asking stuff that everybody that of that time period would be familiar with. And so uh it's kind of like you know, when we try to preach, we try to make preacher relevant or give you examples that you can understand. You know, the, you know, going out, me buying that old that polyester suit <laughs> that mm-hmm. I only wore one time. You know, now I know y'all never did things that crazy or that dumb, but y'all can laugh at me because you did do it probably too. You had something <laughs> like that that you purchased that you thought you wanted. But here he's talking about since it's an agricultural society, mm-hmm. agrarian society, right. uh, they would know. And, and of course, fig trees was you know very common. Olive trees were very common. Right. Grapes, right. because they got the wine. That's where the wine came from. Grape. So mm-hmm. they know about fig trees. They know about olive trees. Mm-hmm. They know about grape vines, right? Yeah. And so, therefore, he can ask the question: Can a fig tree? Right. They're olives. Right. <laughs> hey, look, we didn't live back then, but we don't answer that, don't we? Right. <laughs> we no. No, that's right. <laughs> There's a grapevine bear figs. Right. No. no. <laughs> a fruit tree will bear the fruit of his own tree. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or either it had to be cut down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, so he says, if this is so, how can we correct our behavior? You know, and he's asked a question, who is wise and understanding among you? He sound like he sound like a preacher. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, when we're preaching, uh, we try to give you a many times, you know, the preachers will raise a question. I know I raised more than one. But most of the time, you you raise you know if I was just sticking to the, the to the to the to the format, I raise just one question, and and that one question is what you would be answering. And so you know I had to whip myself and sometimes restrain. But uh, who is wise and understanding among you? In other words, he's laid out now how difficult the tongue can be, what kind of problems it could cause, and so now. How do you, so he wants to know, how do we tell, you know, how can we do better? Oh, yes. Huh? Yeah. God can tame the tongue. God is the only one that can tame the tongue. Okay, one of the things we have to do, and one of the things he's pointing out now is many times these conflicts are caused because people are selfish. That's right. right. They're going to have it their way. They're going to have the last word. And they don't care because they want to be viewed as being 
right. <laughs> and or well, they they want to, you know, they just they, they just gotta have the last word, regardless. And so because of that, that's why sometimes in in, in, in our church settings and order organizational settings, parliamentary procedure says after you've had what you'll say, you had to let somebody else speak. You can't monopolize the floor. Right. You can't just keep you know talking and talking and talking. Sam, well, it was that you? I, I, uh, I remember Greg yeah, would say something. I was just being witness, but that was just being witnessing. But I was sitting here thinking about uh, the the statement that uh, Hank just said: only God can change can control the tongue. But yeah, but we there ought to be some we God in us, right? Don't we? Don't we have a responsibility to do something when we know yeah. the truth? Uh, that you know, there are times that we know that. We should keep our mouth closed. That, that, well, that's, where, that's where wisdom come in. Right, yeah. Right. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm thinking. Wisdom come in to, 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 with the ability to, what we say, press the brakes. Don't say nothing. Calm down. Okay. There you go. And let's move to the next, because the answer is in the next text. Okay. You know, you, we have to, you, we have to try to, to, we have to work at it. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, and what the way, the best way to do it is have a humble spirit. Right. Humble spirit. Right, you know, that goes back to the mind of Christ again. You know, we talk. Yep. See, y'all you know, thought I was just preaching to be preaching, but yep. The, yep. The, the mind of Christ. When right. you put on the mind of Christ, it right. enables you, or should it enable you, to think like Christ. Right. You know, right. ask yourself a question: What would Jesus do? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that was real popular back several years ago, wasn't it? What would Jesus do? It's still popular with me today because you have to, I mean, you got to have it. Because it, it, can, it can restrain us, can't it, Hank? It can be a right. restraining I mean, factor. Right now. It can restrain us because otherwise the us comes out. That's <laughs> right. So we, we don't want the us. We, we see enough of us. We want to see more, be more like him. Be more like him. And so we show that by the way that we carry ourselves and by becoming humble. And we talk about putting the interests of others as elevating that up to at least where we have our own interests. Amen? Right. And when we elevate the interests of others in the church, it will restrain, it should restrain us from because it's not about us. Right. It's about we're in a we setting. And we in this together. We're in it mm -hmm. together. And so by good conduct, by demonstrating our Christ-like behavior through showing good deeds and with gentleness towards us. You know, that's why the church coming again. This stuff is intertwined. It's a, you know, not being quick or what, being slow to take offense. Is that what yeah. it says? Yeah, slow. Mm -hmm. Be slow to anger. Slow to anger. Slow to take offense. But mm -hmm. always ready for what? Reconciliation. Well, see that now you're putting on the you know, now we're being more like Christ. And that's yeah. being humility and, and gentle with one another. Rather than being like Peter. You know, Peter, he pulled that sword in a flash. You know, he pulled the sword out. And, and the sword, you know, the sword, you know, if it cuts somebody else, it can cut you too. And you could regret pulling the sword. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you don't go in the, look, you go in a, you go in a, 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 a sword, you pull the sword, somebody else have an a AK, uh, what do you call them, 15 or 47 or whatever they call them now. It used to be Uzis. Mm -hmm. You get shot dead, right? Yeah, you don't take a, a knife to a gunfight. And so when everybody's everybody's armed and loaded, somebody's got to be disarmed. Right. And the way that we disarm ourselves yeah. is by I think becoming more like Christ. Yeah. And so then we're looking at what happens, what causes this this anger and this bitterness and this jealousy. In the church, well, it really comes back to being about me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. when we put ourselves first mm -hmm. when we're jealous of what 
others appear to have or appear to be. You know, I don't like her because I don't like him because you know, all these reasons. It may not even know the person. Did you know that? You can not like somebody not even know that person. <laughs> but so-and-so said, uh, does so-and-so don't always tell the truth. And you don't know what so usually there may be something that so-and-so is not telling you. That's right. That's true. And uh, we can carry grudges. And then we can be envious of people. And then, of course, there's being self-seeking. And we can be earthy. And we can be sensual. And guess what? Those are the things of the world. That's how the people of the world act, right? Mm -hmm. So they say, that's the, like the devil. That's, mm -hmm. you know. You know, we're, that's what the devil loves. Those are the ploys mm -hmm. of the devil. And so it's not godly wisdom that's being exhibited, but it's demonic. Right. And so... Uh, and, and Pastor... Yes. You just, just, just FYI. In our political environment today, yes. God gives us an opportunity. The text we're reading right now that we, you know, we can discern a lie and you can stay calm with, with the environment that we're in. There's a lot of stuff out there yes. and, and we don't have to get upset about it because we have the discernment. We know truth. Yeah, it's good when you can, you know, when you can keep your wits, yeah. you can handle the problem without lighting the fire. That's right. right. I like this, that right. That's true. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, the Bible says, speak the truth in love. And all of these things you have listed on the screen are just the opposite of love. Yeah. And so, like Hank said, if we, we can keep calm because we know the truth. We can speak the truth, but we got to speak it in love. Yeah, and that's what you. we should do. We should love God, and then we should love each love, other. Love God's people. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. And, but it well, takes a good, but you got to be godly about it, right? Got to be godly. It's a lot. Of, there's a lot of ungodly stuff going on in our environment yeah, right now. In the world, that's correct. And we can't act like other folks. That's right. We can't do it. Uh, as, and so one of the things is learning how to. Oh no! Come on, Ephesians. Go to Ephesians six right quick. Somebody, Ephesians six. Oh, let's see y'all made me go there. <laughs> Put on the whole armor, right? Right. Who's there? Uh, I am. All right, share it with us. You want finally, my brother? Yeah. Finally, yes. my bro finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole mm -hmm. armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But we do not wrestle. Uh, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you might may be able to, uh, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having Amen. raised your waist, uh, waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking the shield of faith Please. with which you will be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praise God. And so what we have to do, like when we put on that whole armor in, in love, as Brother Sadness said, what happens is that we don't have to fight with the same weapons. All the same. No, no. That the world fights with. And you could do it calmly, and therefore you can maintain peace. Yeah. You, you know, when we say that we cheerfully right, recognize the right and the majority to govern, yeah. you see, and this is what we're seeing, uh, unfortunately, being fractured in our society is, there, you know, people not cheerfully recognizing the right and the majority to govern. 
You want to overthrow it and have it our way or my yeah. way. And so therefore, anything that I do is okay because it has to be because I want to have it my way. And no matter what the cost to the nation, amen? Yeah. But it, 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 you light a fire. You know what, you know, and like we said, you know, they, they can say, well, you know, some folks need killing. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, you know, who getting shot at now? Yeah. And I trace this back to, uh, you know, I don't try, I trace it back to Newt Gingrich uh, when they were starting that contract with America and a lot of things they were saying there mm -hmm. and starting to create this environment that we now, don't, don't get me wrong, uh, 45 is accelerated and put Put gasoline on the fire, so to speak. Yes, but the fire was lit right. way back 20 years ago. Yeah. And they kept piling on the fire. And now the fire's out of control. Yep. And, and, and we're all. We, he created us all. So right. we just can't single out who we don't like. But but that's the world, though. That is the world. And that's how, the so world how do we handle it? So we had to use heavenly wisdom. We talked about devilish wisdom, right. yeah, he but he gives us another kind of wisdom. Yeah. Heavenly. Is the, heavenly, which is another way for godly. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we handle it, you know, for, be pure, yeah. peaceable, gentle. You know, I've seen people calm a fire, you know, in, or let's say where, where tempers were soaring and things were getting out of control with a kind word. Mm -hmm. In a gentle spirit, right? In love, yeah. Right. And because that was in their nature that they had exhibited, <laughs> that it has influence. Uh oh, mm -hmm. influence. And so you know, sometimes you need to have the right people to speak, not in anger, right, but in love, right, so that. You can get back to the main issue. That's why in in conferences, the argument is not between people. Whatever the issue is, everything's directed to the chair, right? Yeah. Uh, whoever's presiding. Yeah. And you take the personalities out of it. And once you figure out what the issues are, then you calmly address the issues and try to keep separating personalities so that the church can come out with what? The right decisions, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so let's go back a minute. I think we let's go back to heavenly wisdom before we get to good fruits. Let's go back to one more slide. We're about to go. I know, but pure, peaceable, okay. peaceable, gentle, reasonable, and merciful. Wow. And if you do it in that manner, you might be able to come to a amicable solution to conflict. And we know that's true. I'm, I'm preaching out Philippians again uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, and but if you read the book of Philippians, you know there was a there was a conflict. It wasn't it wasn't a full blown uh, church fight, okay? But there were two members, two sisters in the church who were at odds with each other, right? Mm -hmm. So Paul has to give the word to them so that they they were co laborers. He called them co laborers. Right? Yep. And so he said a good word for them so they can resolve the conflict peaceably in the church. So the fire didn't get lit and tear up the whole church. Yep. And so uh, sometimes God will send, well, that's why we talk about sometimes you have, uh, when people, there's a conflict, you send somebody to, to you know, now you send a person to take a couple of witnesses and you don't take the crew. You don't take your game. All right. You take people with respect in the church. Amen? That's right. People who are viewed well by the church members so that when they know they're not coming, they're not on anybody's side, they're on the Lord's side. So when they come, they they, they you know they got that reputation in the church. And those are the people most likely to be able to get people to listen, right? Yeah. And so a gentle, reasonable. Merciful. Let's move to the last slide as we get ready to close for the night. Uh, it says, full of good fruits. 
And that one of the fruits supposed to bear, we talked about tr a fruit bearing, a tree bearing its fruit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And good fruit. Last week we went to that vine in John 15. And then he says, without partiality mm -hmm. and without hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. You can't you can't speak out of both sides of your mouth. That's right. You can't be one way. You can double, you can't be double minded. You can't say one thing and do another. Because people see what you see. They hear what you say and they see what you do. Right? Yep. And when the parents said, the parents said, same crowd, same crowd. <laughs> the parents parent went to church, the right. parents went to the nightclub one night, the parents went to the church. <laughs> and when he got to church, he saw the same folks at the nightclub he saw in the church. He said, same crowd, same crowd. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm getting a little humor here. Uh, but son in peace, yes. I, I was gonna say in this this slide when when I when I was growing up, uh, my father had a first grade education, and and they, I don't I don't care what they would postpone a church meeting if he wasn't there. Man. He, he he his temperament was such that they wanted him there. Amen. Be, to have church meetings. So yes. that's been all and cut up. I mean, they're principals and teachers. Yeah. And I mean, everybody was in power. But right. he, he would just, didn't have to say nothing, really, just be there. All right. But that's respected. Yeah. That says the type of man he was. And, and so, sown in peace by those who make peace. God bless the peacemakers. No. We need peacemakers in the church. No. We need peace, peacemakers in the world. We need uh, we need people to be more not about tearing down, but about building up the kingdom of God. And so, I think is that the last slide for the night. I believe it is. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's the end of the chapter mm -hmm. three. Why we rolling? Y'all didn't know I could go that. You didn't know we could go that fast, did you? Uh, <laughs> Praise be to God. Thank you so much. We will have chapter four uh, to you next week. We'll go to chapter four. We have five chapters in James. And we thank you for joining us tonight. And if you didn't get a chance to say something tonight, then that means next week you, you want to make sure to join in and give us uh, your uh, view and uh, your uh, thoughts so that we can make sure that everybody participates. I can't see everybody sometimes because of the way when we share screens. But I can slide the screen and say, y'all don't want me to have to call on you like we do in class, like people that the teachers used to do. So just volunteer and you won't have to be called on uh, so that we can hear you because you have something that we need to hear. Uh, you have a, something that needs to be said to help us, the body of Christ, uh, as we work co-laborers in Christ. To God be the glory. We thank you for joining with us tonight. Uh, we pray that uh, you've had some laughter some joy, and some learning tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. God be willing. So I, as we close tonight, um, I know that uh, God is still moving. Uh, we pray for those who are maybe in the hospital, even though I don't call their names. If you know somebody in the hospital, you can alert me to that. Uh, if you know someone who is uh, I'm not aware of any deaths in the church. Thanks be to God uh, or his extended family members this week. Uh, but to God be the glory. We look forward to next week. Let's close with prayer. Any announcements about Deacon Green? Anything that you need to say to us before we close? Oh, Family Friends Day. Family Friends Day this weekend. Uh, last, last year we had a great storm to come in, but it cleared up about 9 o'clock that Saturday morning. We still had a good time. It rained pretty hard, but the people were able to get in the in the family life center, and we had a good time. So we're going to have a good time this time. And All right, I think they called for rain on Friday, but I think it's going to clear up on Saturday. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I also like to say that Iantha's sister Hazel Whitley is in the hospital. Okay. Wake man. Hopefully, okay. she'll be coming out tomorrow or the next day. Praise be to God. We'll be in prayer for her. All right, then. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brother Ward, will you pray us out tonight? Yes, sir. Let us pray. 
Gracious and merciful Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to study your word. Yes. Thank you for, for being in our midst, Lord, guiding us as we thought through your word for our lives. Thank you for giving us a pastor with the wisdom and knowledge to lead us through this process. And thanks for bringing each of us together with our own ideas and conceptions and our grounding in your word, Lord. We pray that you will be with us as we leave this meeting. Bless us throughout the week. We hope to see each other again in the weekend. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go in peace. Amen. Blessings to amen. everyone. Amen.